today is so clear that this is the next iteration of the internet so the the risk is very low it, whatever you learn today is going to be incredibly useful in the future you know in any industry i'm um i'm a veteran in the vacation rental industry so apartments villas and stuff because I started in 2001, I built basically a, a precursor of Airbnb to, to fund my travels. I, I really wanted to travel. I looked for something to do online. And I remember that in the 90s, when I was traveling in, uh, in Eastern Europe, there were ladies coming with the pictures of apartments. And, and I had tried those apartments that were great and cheap. So I went back to Prague with a digital camera and i basically told them i'm gonna put you online in in the year 2001 and that was very easy and fast because there was nothing so google picked me up immediately i was the first one so i had you know requests and bookings and then i you know i went to budapest and then krakow and then riga vilnius Tallinn. so i built this like lifestyle business in the vacation rental space which was again pre airbnb and it was great because i, I was earning money while traveling so it made me also maybe the first italian digital nomad ever because i was doing that when i was traveling with the laptop i was like you know once in bali they were asking me to pay for the electricity in the bar because they've never seen anybody with a laptop traveling and also it made me like maybe one of the first bloggers like travel bloggers in the world again 2001 so i i basically traveled uh, so travel is my industry but travel is my passion too and and the internet allow me to you know go from full full travel um full-time travel life for many years um until airbnb uh, and then airbnb came they they did basically they took this market and they made it much bigger and they made my own little website my only the platform uh, irrelevant so i had to kind of you know pivot so i launched a startup uh in the in the vacation rental space again but this time it was basically helping people to manage their apartments on airbnb on booking.com etc and in 2000 and that was in like 2012 or something in 2013 i discovered bitcoin again one of those things which are intriguing but hard to understand because they're very theoretical so i bought a little bit to you know just play with it and it turned out that you know, I bought it at a very low price at the time, but I could finally understand the, what it meant. And I went very deep. It was like my platform was maybe one of the first in the world to accept Bitcoin for payment. 2017, uh, I was a bit in a crisis because I didn't want to help people to be on Airbnb or Booking because I realized that after the first years in which hosts were very well treated, uh, they kind of became the commodity and the guest became the, the important um, player in this. So it became, you know, the margins were reducing and I kind of felt I was helping them more and more to be exploited rather than having a, a business. And then Ethereum, uh, I discovered Ethereum a bit late, three years after its inception. And Ethereum was promising that, you know, that you could build DAOs, like kind of cooperatives coordinated by a token and we could build something like airbnb without the company just as a as a community so i launched trips community uh, in 2017 then we launched a token and then ever since we tried to see to, to like to build some alternative to these mega platforms uh so far we have we haven't accomplished that but we you know the whole space went ahead a lot and it's been a great journey and it's getting better by the day so that's and and during this journey we everybody you know who joined trips um they kind of learn a lot of things some people got jobs and partnerships and stuff so it was great uh and it's really great to be here today uh, we're still not mainstream but um, the, the feeling is that what we know uh is you know we know that this is going to happen we don't know when and how so we find ourselves in an incredibly good position and as i've always done in my life i want to share this with other people i want to at least to give you know the possibility to to understand how important this is 
and uh, so I'm, I'm I'm always sharing. Uh, Trips is also a, a place where you can come and learn about this for free. And uh, and we are experimenting at the moment. We're not really building a lot of stuff, which is which is going to go mainstream. But again, it's a it's a lot of fun, and at the same time, is I wouldn't change this for any other, you know, for working for a Web two company or even launching a startup in Web two. So yeah, very good moment. Even if now we are in a bear market, but it's a very good <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah, um, it's interesting that you say Web two because there's this transition that's happening to yeah. uh, Web three, and it's something that you say very explicitly as people come to the Trips community website. We have a simple thesis: Web three will eat travel. Um, how do you explain Web three to someone who is new to the space? Uh, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, web one is the web at the beginning until maybe 2010 or something, where most people were only reading. So it's the web one, the web of the read only um, users. Uh, it was really hard to write. You, you had to know HTML, FTP, and stuff like this. So it wasn't impossible to write, but most people were just reading. So web one, read only. And at the same time, the small web, the web of small websites, not a lot of investments, um, a lot of you know amateurs. It was really vibrant and interesting, but the business was still done offline. Then it slowly um, changed to to the web we know today, which we call Web two, and the change was caused, in my opinion, mostly by uh, two factors. Um, one factor is that a lot of money came in, so. A lot of investments, but the technological factor is also important. There was this, uh, specifically, this uh, new technology called AJAX, which allowed people to write stuff. So before you would be online in front of a screen, you would only read, and then you could actually write something, click a button, and without the page reloading and taking a lot of time, see your text on the on the page. So Facebook became possible, and many other platforms. So the web 2 is a web like of read and write people write on on web 2 now, today you know if you, especially if you're very young it seems normal yeah, the internet is a place where you're writing but before you couldn't right so the web has evolved and if if you've been there a long time long enough you realize that it, it really changed from the beginning so then you have to do the next step right if it changed once will it change again because we have this bias as humans that wherever we're living today is not going to change <laughs> Even today, in the 21st century, where things change so fast, you know, that was understandable in, you know, three, four hundred years ago. If you live 80 years, nothing changed. But every 10 years, everything changes now, right? But we still kind of plan and, and, and the, the worldview is like a static one. And it's not like that. And the web is changing too. So what is changing now? Well, we have read, we have write. And the web tree is bringing to us own, own meaning you can have ownership of stuff. And of course, the next question is, what would you own? Why would I own something on the web? And I turn out this question by saying, look, the thing is that you own stuff in the real world. You own, you know, maybe a car, a house, a phone, whatever. You know, many things you actually own, because there's um, uh, there's a rule of law, like. If you have a house, you have a contract which protects you in this ownership. But on the web, and the web is, is is always perceived as the most advanced, like the more advanced place compared to the real world. But the web is today in in the Middle Ages, it's a feudalistic system where we do not own anything. You do not own your Airbnb account, your Instagram account, your Facebook account, you do not own your listing. Uh, you do not own your reviews. Like in real, in the real world, your reputation is connected to your name, and nobody can take away your name. Twitter can take away your name anytime. So all your followers in Twitter and Instagram can go. All your reviews in in Airbnb can go at any time. And sometimes, and most of the times, the decision is taken by an algorithm. So on Web two, we have no ownership, apart from one little thing, which is the domain name. We figured out how to give ownership to people for domain names because they are a very important part of the web imagine if the domain names were managed by google and google could simply de de platform you by removing your domain name you wouldn't invest you wouldn't risk a lot on your domain name but so let's say that google had domain names 
Facebook would depend would be depending on Google for the Facebook.com domain. So they wouldn't do that. That would be too risky. So we have domain names. Web3 is like everything else. We will own our accounts. Uh, well, we do own our accounts already in Web3. And everything connected to the account, we own too. We will own our listings, our reviews, our customers, and everything else. So it's a very simple concept. Is is with everything online? It's it's simple, but it's hard to grasp because it's like you need to interiorize it. You need to to kind of use it to understand, and you can't really explain what it means to own an account until you have a wallet and you experiment it by by using Web three apps. Uh, but just that's why I go into metaphors, and and they are much more powerful. It's like Web two is the feudalistic Europe in the Middle Ages. Web3 is the new continent, the Americas, uh, specifically the North America, where you could go and actually own a plot of land, and there would be a paper, and this paper, this, this deed, will be sacred because the law is more important than the king, and there's no king. Mm. No, there was no king in America, right? So this is the kind of paradig sh paradigm shift we're doing in the web. We are upgrading to the rule of law. Uh, so we're doing what happened five years, five, five years ago in the real world. And the rule of law is written mostly on blockchains and maybe more specifically on smart contracts. Got it. One of the things that you mentioned that I think is really important, like you said, is the people starting to experiment, starting to play, starting to have their own wallets, getting skin in the game. And I think that happens more when you start to see use cases like the ones you've talked about, um, real world potential for traveling, for booking, uh, as opposed to maybe the digital art, which can seem a little bit difficult to, to actually grasp in comparison to doing something like you're used to doing travel, for example. Um, when you think about these platforms and how they might change and how people might use Web3 to start using, uh, to start booking or to start traveling, what do you think that looks like? How could that um, start to be? Um, enjoyed or made real yeah it, the, it's always really hard to forecast what's going to happen you, it's, it's easy to see the direction but how this is going to happen is hard because we we tend to think in skeuomorphic ways which means we see what is there today and mm. we 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 kind of decline it um for the future like the first thing i told in 2017 was like okay decentralize the airbnb all right, so a website where you would do whatever you do in Airbnb, but but is decentralized. And today, I'm, I'm, I still have this idea, but this is the end of a long journey, and the journey to that situation is already is is already going to change how travel, for instance, bookings are made. And one way to explain that, oh, we have to explain this at the beginning. Now, when and and we'll take Airbnb as as an example because it's you know, is, is my core, uh, this industry, but it could be booking, it could be anything else. Um, when you open an account in Airbnb, they basically tell you, uh, get a passport, get, get a passport to get in Airbnb. And the passport is represented by a login and a password. So they issue a login and a password and they store them in their servers, which is like a passport in a country. And when they remove your passport, you can't go anymore, right? So they have complete control of your access in their website. Um, in Web3, it works differently. In Web3, I have my own passport. And because you are part of an international community, you have to let me in. Because if you don't let me in, you're not part of that community. So, and the password is my hands, it's not issued by you. So in Web3, my account is not a login and a password, is a wallet which is again, private key, public keys, is almost like a login and a password, but they're not in your servers. They are in my own wallet, in my computer. And when I want to access your website, I don't have to create an account, I already have one. I basically sign a message and I say, okay, I want to connect to your website now. And you can read stuff in my account, sorry, in my wallet. So you already have identified me. You don't need to ask me for a new username, right? And so I connect to your decentralized Airbnb, you send me bookings, and then tomorrow you, you decide to kick me out. All right. 
I I can't access your website anymore. You don't send me customers anymore, which is fine. They're your customers. But I keep my account, I keep my listing, I keep my reviews, I keep everything. So the OTA becomes much thinner. Uh, it only provides customers or maybe you know searchability and stuff. But they don't capture my account, my listing, my reviews, and everything else. That's one way it's gonna change. But to get there, we are going for not we as trips community, but in general, the, the web yeah. tree space is going to build the features Airbnb has in a decentralized manner. Let me give you an example. Uh letters before email, we, we would need to go to the post office, which is a third party, and and ask them to deliver our letters. Okay. And uh and then email came and we said well, we don't need the post office anymore, we can do it online and that was and it still is today the email is a protocol uh basically the internet delivers the service which the the post office delivered before and it, in web tree for travel the internet will deliver the same services that otas deliver today for instance escrow payments like when you pay airbnb the money goes to airbnb they keep it until check-in so they they offer this great service which is like you're paying, but you're not paying the host directly, so the host cannot run away, right? We kind of guarantee. And with Web3, the internet can do this in, in a very elegant manner, uh, even better, at a much, much cheaper price. And actually, we're even removing the third part, the third, the counterparty risk, which is like Airbnb uh, risk, which could actually, and again, close your account, don't pay you cancel your booking as it happened at the beginning of COVID and stuff like this. So the warrior is not going to be small web tree startups against Airbnb or booking. The war is the internet against Airbnb and booking because the internet is going to have all these protocols for payments. I gave you the example of escrow payments, but it can be for listing creation, reviews management and, and everything else. So new protocols will emerge some protocols will kind of uh, become famous and, and uh, process a lot of money and so also harden uh, uh, you know on, on the battlefield and also in, the, in that way increase their trust and at a certain point when you have a, a direct booking website you're going to say i want to accept cryptocurrencies i'm going to use this protocol i feel very comfortable using it because you know there's a billion dollars every year or a billion dollars a day i don't know going through that is it hasn't been hacked mm -hmm. rather than going through some third party uh like booking engine we will still have booking engines and stuff and we still have otas but this is for the legacy fiat world so if you have to manage your own dollars and credit cards you have to use those systems but if you want to use crypto we're gonna have much better systems got it so in terms of benefiting travelers or benefiting the hosts, it sounds like uh, there's a number of ways that this helps as far as convenience, kind of security. Um, are there other ways that you see these kinds of technologies being uh, useful for kind of the, the end user? So first of all, uh, usually people will think, okay, it's lower commissions, which is great. Instead of paying 15 or 20%, you maybe pay 1%. It, it's, it's great, but it, that's not a game changer. Mm -hmm. Uh, the game changer is again that I have complete control on my assets. So um, let's say that I want to sell my my business. Um, I can sell my reviews too. But today it's not easy to pass my account, my Airbnb account, somebody else. Maybe cannot be transferred, right? But basically, because I am independent now on Web3, uh, the the lower commission is is basically automatic because they don't have that take rate. The take rate commission in Web3 generally is very low. Like an example would be OpenSea, which is an NFT marketplace. Mm -hmm. The take rate is 2.5%. It's not 20% or 15. And it's, it's still high. There are also cheaper ones. So we have total control of our assets. Uh, so we become actually entrepreneurs for the first time. Uh, and of course, comparing to the your classic you know, Airbnb host, which is not an entrepreneur it's just working on somebody else's land hoping that everything goes well and become actually entrepreneurs uh, become actually citizens of the web uh earning more or the guests pay less 
you know when, when there's a hundred percent price paid and 20 percent or 15 percent goes to the ota and you remove that everything becomes cheaper or margins increase or, or probably both yeah. and that's and and then we will see innovation start again now airbnb has innovated a lot at the beginning and is not innovating now uh, or at least not as much as they could because they reached a, a point in which they're more in defending uh, what, what they built rather than disrupting it and and we've seen this with the decentralized exchanges so if, even if you don't know what it is it's just a an app like airbnb on on web3 and when the the first one launched the the first successful one launched which is called uniswap because the code was open both the code of the smart contract and the front end so the website was open they everybody was it was very easy to copy them and now we have many of them around so the competition innovation is really really fast and in the travel space let's say that somebody builds a decentralized airbnb uh, i don't know five years from now because all the protocols are ready the next day you're going to have 10 more because you take the code you fork it and you do a different version saying i don't know we are faster we are cheaper we are following and you know dedicating to a niche uh whatever uh, we are localized uh, in, in a specific region or we you know whatever you, you the innovation is it's really cheap because you don't need to build everything from scratch and you, do, you don't need to attract the the listings and you don't need to ask people to up you know create the listing once again and start from zero reviews you just, just say connect your wallet your listing and your reviews are going to be there immediately so competition will be enormous and at that point the web tree alternatives will be much faster than the web 2 because everything they do in, in the web 2 platforms they have to develop it themselves and nobody can come in you know no, nothing has come up since airbnb there, there, there were a few companies trying and they died out basically and now we are there with three four platforms and no, nobody can actually come and make a new booking.com it's just too much because they are they have captured the market they have captured the listing they've captured their views everything is captured which is great for them and less great for for competition again there was no competition during the the medieval times with the kings right everything was made through war you had to actually conquest the land but in 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 america there was real competition because the whole structure the whole framework was like competition is good because it brings innovation uh, speaking of that innovation or development you mentioned of the experiments that you might be the church community is putting together are there any that you'd want to to mention or that you are particularly uh, excited about for the next couple of years yeah so, uh, since uh last year so beginning of last year we realized that uh it was too early for a booking platform and we said okay let's switch to simply openly just experimenting with these technologies they are very immature technologies there's no point in trying to go to market and that was like the big beginning of last year let's see what comes up play with it openly uh, share the results and just let's you know start thinking uh ways to use these technologies in trouble and we experimented with a few things and when nfts last year became mainstream or almost mainstream we we tried a few things and first of all we tried nft bookings and the the reason it was like when i book something i am actually doing a contract so i book a hotel room i have a contract with the hotel room i pay you that money you give me that that room for that night and the same thing is if, if i book through booking.com it's a contract with booking which is a contract with the hotel so it's it's contract based but contracts are they're not they're not transferable right uh, so if i cancel the booking i basically cancel the contract but nfts represent value and we thought why don't we represent a booking as an nft which is like that night in that hotel is an nft is a digital asset i buy it and that gives me the right to stay in the hotel and if i want to cancel maybe i can send it back to the hotel and they refund me or i sell it on the marketplace somebody may want to buy that room maybe i can sell it cheaper 
or maybe everything is full and and i can say more expensive whatever or maybe the same price so um by doing that the theory was like hotels could actually issue nights hotels vacation rental whatever issue nights as nfts and, and just sell them so people would buy them and then the hotelers made the money a year before two years before and they made their nights liquid and once they sold them they sold them they can you know maybe they're going to do everything non refundable and the guests will buy them because they're not refundable but they are sellable you, you can sell them mm -hmm. on the same marketplace so we did the first nft booking in the world in uh, in a villa in ibiza spain then we were contacted by a big tour operator in uh, in italy and we did the first hotel nft booking in the world in venice a five-star hotel um and that was very interesting we learned a lot of things we learned also the limitations and limitations are that companies are not able to manage wallets today or and mo most guests neither so and that brings us to the biggest limitation for web3 adoption which is wallet adoption uh, only people with a wallet can actually play with these things and most people don't have a wallet and i don't see this happening very quickly because wallets are complicated and also dangerous like if you have a lot of money in it or or your account and you're not really careful with your private keys you lose them so this is never going to be mainstream until some way to manage wallets comes out which is safe easy and, and fast and then we experimented with um, like web3 marketing for travel uh, connected to nfts which you can mint basically means buy right and they represent uh your interest in travel and uh, and we've seen comp we've seen like um hotels using them as as a also as a test basically to get bookings to represent uh the stay etc etc so yeah so a lot of experimentation uh the realization that it, it's still too early uh to actually go mainstream but this is a very good moment to think about it and try new things and then we've seen this year many other startups try new things and it's actually very very nice to see because sooner or later somebody's gonna come out with a perfect idea at the perfect moment today is like building airbnb in 94 when nobody very few people had a modem and there was no way uh there was no penetration of internet uh, yet but uh but we're there um and you know it's it's, it's growing daily so again it's a really good moment to be because whatever idea you have uh, could become the next big thing yeah it seems like the way that you've described it um this freedom to create or innovate can lead to kind of the the bigger ideas without the pressure right away to be taking some sort of huge investment and having to perform it's th that sort of liberty yeah um is there anything else that you'd want to mention about people who could get involved in web3 or get involved in trips community um how they can contribute to the the space um yeah what, what i would say is like you consider web and um, trips community as as a resource like it's a place where we actually we are thinking it we've been thinking for a long time about travel uh solutions in web3 um we are again we're experimenting um so if you come in and first thing you can learn and, and that's free and then you can help um and that earns you our tokens um and um uh, and then you know it's, it's mostly a, a game of preparation of of getting ready for when these things happen and uh uh one thing i can say is like we don't have this welcome risk you know uh, welcoming uh re re I'm lo I lost the word. It's not, it's not easy to get in because nobody's gonna tell you. Okay, let me let me know your name. What you're doing? Okay, go in that room and do that. Uh, we tried this at the beginning, and we realized it, it's it's more like open source where you you see uh, you know a GitHub repository, and you start. Okay, nobody's done this, and you do it, and you make a pull request, and then it will be accepted or not, right? Uh, so you have to kind of go around this very messy environment and then say, okay, guys, I want to help you this because you're doing this. Like right now we're organizing a conference. I want to help you with a conference or before I wanted to help you with the uh, PFP NFTs. It's like this, this picture mm -hmm. NFTs. 
and maybe after the, after the conference, oh yeah, I have this idea. Why don't we do it? And we'll be like, okay, uh, try it. Let's, uh, see if somebody wants to help you build your little group, and if it's worth it, we can even put a little bit of budget on, on this. And so it's this kind of environment. Nobody is, is able to really help you blend in. So it has to be, you know, it, it, you have to find your your place basically, and you find your place by by doing something. So it's still again, this is not the attitude most people want. Uh, so it's not mainstream. Most people want to be told what to do and then how to do it, etc. We're not there yet. But this is a general problem or general approach with DAOs because it also filters out people who don't have the initiative. And today you need initiative 100% in, in this space. Anything else that you'd want to, to mention? I think we've covered quite a, a range of Web3 travel topics. Yeah, no, I would say this is still the, the, the kind of the far west. Um, we are in a bear market, as I was mentioning, which is great because the most of the attention is around building stuff people are not running you know following tokens right and left they're not trying to make as much money as they can as, as during the bull run so uh, and and the tourists have left tourists meaning to web tree tourists crypto tourists have left the opportunists have left today if you come in any web tree project including trips only people who are really passionate about this are there. And these are very precious people uh, because they learned already a lot. They can teach you a lot. They're very welcoming because, again, it's not too busy. And it's probably the best moment in, in history to get into crypto. And many people think, oh, I missed, you know, I missed the Bitcoin at, at $100. It's late. I missed um, Ethereum at $1. It's late. It, it's not late. Uh, before you needed to actually believe in something which was mostly unbelievable it's like how is this ever going to work today is so clear that this is the next iteration of the internet so the the risk is very low it, whatever you learn today it's going to be incredibly useful in the future you know in any industry so you have this this part that Okay, I'm gonna learn Web3. It's not like I'm gonna learn jujitsu, ju whatever you call that. You, you're learning to drive a car. You, you're gonna have to drive a car in the future. Maybe it's a bad example. People don't drive cars anymore, but like, it, it's like learning to read and and write before, you know, when you book, you know, the books are gonna be everywhere. So uh, a very easy bet, in my opinion, and it's still not too easy. There's still this bump in the road where most people stop because we've been used to we we'll, we have learned to do easy things online, right? Click buttons and everything is very user friendly. So most people won't go there, and that opens you a great opportunity for people who want to make the little extra step. It's not that that hard if you really want to do it. It's, you don't even have to become a developer at all. So yeah, I invite anyone today, really anyone, to to join Web3. Uh, because it's going to pay off uh, very well in the future, in my opinion. And I'm not talking about investments. I'm talking about actually doing things and working. Finding purpose and making an impact, the important important things to do with one's life. Yeah, also, if you are in a company and you are an expert in Web3, sooner or later, the boss is going to say, OK, who knows about Web3? We need a wallet. <laughs> we need to sit, you know, keep our tokens. We need somebody to do It's like I'll guarantee that if you learn Web3 and you work in a big company, Sooner or later, they're going to look for you if they haven't done already. So great investment of your time.